Hi, my name is Ray and welcome to Bookmark Chronicles. I took to Twitter and Instagram to ask what this video should be about. I asked if people wanted a tag or if people wanted a rant and y'all are petty because not a single person said they wanted a tag, but it's okay because I'm going to give you what you want. Today we're going to talk about tropes that I hate. These tropes tend to show up in YA specifically, uh, probably more often than not. For each trope, I'm going to list a few books that I saw them come up in. Um, before I get into spoilers, I'll give you a spoiler warning, but I'm going to use certain books to show examples of why I hate certain tropes. Trope number one, love triangles. I am fully aware that it is highly possible that I have not seen a love triangle done well and that may be the reason that I hate this trope so much. Every time a love triangle comes up in one of the books that I'm reading, I feel like it doesn't really fit with the story and it's kind of out of place or the person who's like at the tip of the triangle doesn't have feelings for one of the other people so it kind of doesn't really make sense like at that point it's not really a triangle. So a few books where the love triangle trope comes up, The Mortal Instruments, but I'm gonna not talk about that too much with this trope specifically because there tend to be a lot of tropes that come up in that series so I'm gonna talk about that a little later. Hunger Games and Twilight. I think by now y'all know how I feel about Twilight. I am actually rereading Hunger Games right now. I just started book one two days ago, I think. Um, I'm rereading it so that I can read A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I'm at the part where they're just about to get into the games. And even here, the whole love triangle that's about to be set up in the coming books doesn't make sense. If you have not yet read The Hunger Games and you want to, I suggest you skip ahead so that I don't spoil anything for you. If you have read The Hunger Games or seen the movies, I personally felt like Gail should have never been a part of it. Katniss never had feelings for him. And as I'm rereading the books, in the very first chapter, Katniss says, there's never been anything romantic between Gail and me. That is a direct quote from the very first chapter of The Hunger Games. So how he got thrown into it doesn't make sense to me. I feel like it was kind of just like, hmm, I need something to do with this character. So yeah, I'm gonna make him fall in love with her and I'm gonna make that a thing. I feel like it was completely unnecessary. Also, with everything happening in the Hunger Games, the fact that Katniss is literally fighting for her life in every single book, when does this chick have time to decide which guy she's more interested in? Like the world is literally crumbling down around her. She gets thrown into the games in the first book. She, well, she throws herself into the games to protect her sister, right? Second book, she survives and then because President Snow's a bitch, he throws her back into the games. She already has PTSD at this point. And then Peta, who is like the only person who really understands her because they come from the same place, they went through the games together, they are suffering the same things, and he's kind of like the rock that helps hold her together. He's gone in Mockingjay. So then she's freaking out because where the hell is Peta? Why, like what happened to him? Why did you let the capital get to him? And then Peta comes back and he tries to kill her. Where does she have time to think about love? Also, she's leading the revolution. This, this doesn't make sense. She doesn't have time for this. There should not have been a love triangle in the Hunger Games. That was dumb. That was a bad choice. I do not approve. Now for the love triangle in Twilight. When I first read Twilight, I think I was in high school. 14 year old me thought it was cute. I was team Edward. I'm typically team OTP, so Maybe that's another reason that I don't like love triangles. I just like, just let the couple, let them be. Like let them have their own problems that doesn't involve a third party. I don't feel like Jacob really ever had a chance with Bella, okay? And even though I really like Jacob as a character, I like him as the best friend person for Bella, there should have never been any romantic implications between them. And like I said with um, Hunger Games, I just feel like there, like there was, it was kind of like a, I need something to do with this character, as if making him a werewolf wasn't enough. And it was just like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make him fall in love with her, and we're gonna make a big deal out of it for no reason at all. If you have not read Twilight, 
at this point i advise you not to but if you don't want any spoilers because you're going to i suggest you skip ahead i think that bella loved jacob he's her longest friendship he, when she moves to forks he's like the only person that she really already knows besides her dad um but I don't think there needed to be a love triangle here because Jacob was really just kind of possessive and was like, I'm going to get into a pissing contest with Edward for no reason, really, literally for no reason. Like, it doesn't even make sense. And the thing that pisses me off about Jacob is he started to be really manipulative when it came to his feelings for Bella, like in is it new moon or eclipse i'm not sure which one but there's like a battle that's about to happen it's not the big battle with the Volturi, but there's a field where they're going to meet somebody and the wolves are going to be there and bella's up on this cliff in a little tent somewhere y'all know what i'm talking about but right before the battle and i think bella and edward are engaged at this point right so jacob's like i know that you're engaged but if you don't ask me to kiss you I might let myself get killed in this battle bitch what that is manipulative if nothing else is like who the fuck does that who does that that is not okay that is that's that's such a shitty thing to do especially for one of your closest friends it was just so weird and uncomfortable and of course, at that point, Bella felt like she had no choice because she cares about him and his well-being. But like, who the fuck does that? Like, what is wrong with you? And then all of that, just so you could imprint on her daughter. Jacob thinking that he was in love with Bella should have never happened. Because I feel like you also would have known if you had imprinted on her because the other wolves talk about what it's like. And that didn't happen. So like, how you you caused all this ruckus fucking up with somebody's relationship for what because you're jealous get, get the fuck over it now i kind of hate jacob hmm. well oh well it's fine trope number two is best friends to lovers i don't see this often but i saw it in the mortal instruments <laughs> and it was awful <laughs> it was trash I have a lot of feelings about that series in general, but oh God. All right, I'm gonna just go ahead and say it. I hate Simon. I really hated him in the book and in the show, despite the fact that the acting in that show was pretty much trash all the way through. I like, I like the actor who played him. I like Simon a lot better in the show, but in the book, he could have died and I would have been okay. So if you have not read The Mortal Instruments yet and you want to, please skip ahead so I don't spoil anything for you. If you have read The Mortal Instruments, you know that our main character, Clary, falls in love with a shadow hunter, Jace, before she finds out that she is also a shadow hunter. And her best friend, Simon, is mortal at first. I don't know when he turns into the daylight or whatever, but I, I don't care. Honestly, he could have just died at the was it the end of the third book he could have died and i would have been totally fine with it i guess he's someone for izzy but izzy got hoes she can find anybody i feel like again simon and clary never really stood a chance even in the little bit of time um where clary and jace were going to date but didn't because the the brother sister thing happened which is really fucking weird i feel like simon was an opportunist there because he knew that clary was already falling in love with jace but then this secret comes out and he's like hmm yeah i'm gonna go ahead and slide on in here and uh see what happens and when i read it i didn't feel like clary ever had romantic feelings for simon i think she loved him and i think that she wanted him in her life as her best friend and nothing more. Simon, on the other hand, apparently had been secretly pining for her, but never said anything. And this is what I hate. Like, if you have feelings for someone and you don't tell them, you one, can't get mad at them for when they fall in love with somebody else. Two, you don't get to feel like 
just because you're friends that y'all should have a relationship some people need to just stay friends and I kind of feel like Simon was mad at Clary for not knowing he had feelings for her but how are you gonna be mad at somebody when you didn't tell them and then she fell in love with somebody else now all of a sudden you want to reveal your love like no that's weird that's weird and then you took the opportunity to start dating her and I feel like Clary didn't actually want to date Simon I felt like she kind of just did one as a distraction from Jace and two because Simon kind of made her feel bad and uh, I just I don't like that pressuring people into relationships is not okay that's that's weird that's really weird quick edit I just looked up my review from the first time that I read the mortal instruments and apparently in book one Simon gets mad at Clary and tells her that she broke his heart when he had spent the entire night giving his attention to somebody else what the fuck did you expect how is she supposed to know that you have feelings for her if you don't want to tell her and you're literally flirting with somebody else in front of her this is why i hated simon i don't know if best friends lovers is a common trope and this is the only time that i've seen it but if it works out better in other books let me know because the way it happened here mm -mm. I'm not here for it and it's also why i hate the phrase friend zone you weren't friend zone you just had feelings for someone and they weren't reciprocated because let's be honest when people talk about being friend zoned they flip it and make themselves the victim you're not a victim just because you don't know how to handle rejection properly okay all that bullshit take it to the curb i don't necessarily know if this is considered a trope but i also have an issue and this always happens in male female friendships but when one of them starts to have feelings for the other the male character always feels like he's entitled to the female character and that is a huge issue for me you're not entitled to anybody nobody owes you their time love attention or affection and the entitlement aspect comes up in all of the books that i've mentioned so far simon feels entitled to claire because they've been best friends and they've known each other for such a long time Jacob feels entitled to Bella because they've known each other longer than she's known Edward and he feels that him being a werewolf is more superior than a vampire. And then Gail felt entitled to Katniss because they had been friends for so long and before she met Peta. I don't know why that is such a common thing, but you're not entitled to anybody. Nobody knows you anything. You can have feelings for someone and if they're not reciprocated, you need to learn how to handle that properly do what you have to do if you need to eat a pipe of ben and jerry's ice cream and watch a rom-com and cry it out then do it but nobody owes you anything and that thought needs to go away the next trope that i hate and it comes up so often in ya is girl hate when two girl characters will hate each other for literally no reason and i guess it kind of stems from societal uh, baggage and whatever and how like women are taught that other women are their competition especially when it comes to men all that's bullshit and we all know that so like stop perpetuating the bullshit this is another thing that comes up in the mortal instruments izzy doesn't have any female friends at all and i think she even says like she always thought that she was supposed to compete and always be better and this that and the third until she meets clary and I just well, I don't understand why this is a thing I think now we've come into an age where um, we're trying to teach young girls to always uplift each other and empower each other but the fact that this trend went on for so long it's a problem and I hated that it came up in the mortal instruments at all I mean like I said before I actually end up having a lot of issues with that series but the, the girl hates gotta stop because it's disgusting. The next trope that I hate is when the main character is a young girl and she doesn't know she's pretty until some random dude tells her that she is. I don't know why this is such a popular trend. I feel like this comes up a lot. Most recently the book that I read where this came up was when Dimple met Rishi and Dimple's a badass. She's super smart. She has all these things going for her and she's entering this really, uh, really great program where she's developing an app and gets to work with her idol. And I feel like, and this is, I guess, a trope within a trope, the whole uh, 
girl doesn't know she's pretty until a guy tells her she is also comes along with the trope of girls can't be talented and pretty I don't know why that's a thing like I don't I, I just I don't understand I don't understand why this has been perpetuated for so long and it just doesn't make sense to me I feel like those two often go hand in hand but also it's annoying when like the main female character is always described as plain or she's not pretty until some dude tells her she is but at the same time the male main character is supposed to be like wildly attractive and all the girls are whispering about him as he walks down the hallway and it's like what internalized sexist misogynistic bullshit are you fighting with that you need to put this in cut it out this this trope just needs to end kill it the last trope that i want to mention is tokens whether it's the token fat friend token person of color this trope just needs to die because they will literally add in this one character that is the only representation of any sort of diversity throughout the entire book and they just stereotype the fuck out of it it's annoying you can't do a token trope well you either add diversity to your books or you don't it's pretty simple and that's all I have to say about it. So those are some of the tropes that I hate. I don't really think there are many tropes that I like. I like enemies to lovers. If you like that as well, The Unhoneymooners was a really good book for that. And technically Pride and Prejudice also, I do really love Lizzie Bennet. Um, but if you have any tropes that you really, really like, let me know because aside from enemies to lovers, I don't think that there are any I'm not sure. That's all I have for you. I'll see you in the next video.